Kane requests Spurs exit. Real begin. Raul talks Liverpool to reject permanent cutback deal. Frankfurt could face an exodus and a transfer roundup all coming up in the next few minutes. As I'm your host, Mark Foley. You are the one footballers, and this is the Daily News. So first up, and it is the transfer news that all Spurs fans have been fearing for quite some time. And apparently, according to some Sky sources, and we don't have an actual line on it yet from the Harry Kane camp, he is asked to leave Tottenham Hotspur. Now, this is something that maybe has seemed a little bit obvious within the last few years, and it's something that has constantly been talked about. That if Harry Kane feels like he's not going to be able to win enough trophies, then he may look elsewhere. Of course. Who's to say next season whether or not who's going to be winning trophies? As we all thought football was easy to predict, but it turns out in the last few seasons, it is definitely not. Anyway, if, it's a big if, he is to leave the club this summer, it will obviously cost a ridiculous amount of money. The reason being is one of the best in Europe. He has a three, year, three years sorry, left on his contract at Tottenham, and well, they're not exactly going to let him go for cheap. Now, where could Harry Kane be going? This is the big talking point. So, there's a few teams which are obviously going to be mentioned, and when you take into account the fact, like I said, he's going to cost a lot of money, he's going to want to move and play regularly, there are only few teams who are really in the running. Let's go through a few of them that are not in the running. Bayern Munich, they said they won't buy Haaland because of Lewandowski, so they probably won't buy Kane because of Lewandowski. Elsewhere in Germany, I'm not sure the likes of Borussia Dortmund really have enough money to tempt Kane. In Italy, Juventus seem like the only ones who will be able to spend that much money, but if they don't make the Champions League, Kane won't want to join. And if they do make the Champions League, Cristiano Ronaldo will probably stay. So there you have the problem of him not being in the starting eleven. When you look at Spain, both Barcelona and Real Madrid could really tempt Kane into joining. I don't think I've got the money though. There have been so many discussions about the finances this season, especially Barcelona, how they need to get rid of a lot of wage in the squad. They need to sell before they even think about buying. And much of their focus has been on free transfers like Memphis Depay, Sergio Aguero, and Gini Wijnaldum. So for them to suddenly pull 150 odd million um, from down the back of the sofa to pay for Kane, I can't exactly see happening. And the same thing really goes with Real Madrid after they spent quite a lot of money in the last few transfer windows. So that brings us to one of two potential destinations, two potential leagues. The first one is PSG in League A, but unfortunately, much like with the Lewandowski or the Cristiano Ronaldo situation, Kane's not exactly going to be happy with sitting on the bench behind the likes of Mbappe and Neymar. Yes, they could potentially play as a front three, but then you've also got the case of Mario Riccardi, who's been signed a permanent deal, and Moise Keane, who also looks like he could be coming in on a permanent basis. So, we finally come to the Premier League, and there are three clubs who are reportedly willing to pay the money and want to tempt him to leave North London. One of them is Chelsea. It's not going to happen. Chelsea are actually the ones who are most likely to pay the most, but when it comes to Tottenham players moving to Chelsea and vice versa, it doesn't really happen. They're massive London rivals, and I can't really see Kane making that switch. So that leaves Manchester United or Manchester City. Both of them would probably pay the money, but again, there's still one or two question marks as to whether or not they'd be willing to do it. Pep Guardiola was saying last month in response to Harden links that City don't have the money to spend big on a massive transfer. Manchester United have just signed Cavani up to a new deal for another season. Are they really going to, maybe the word is beg, beg Cavani to stay, give him a new deal, promise him first team football? and then just go and sign Harry Kane and condemn Cavani to sit on the bench for the next season? I don't think that's going to happen. They also need to sort out a few more signings in central midfield and central defence. And Jadon Sancho is still on their list as well. So that leaves me with Manchester City. Aguero's leaving the club. It looks like Gabriel Jesus definitely isn't a guaranteed starter. And the way that Guardiola plays football would suit Kane so well. He'd score so many goals. This is the only one I can see possibly happening that's if it's going to happen at all. Of course, this is going to rumble on for some time over the summer and you can expect that his value will probably only go up should he have a very good European campaign in the summer. As for who's going to replace Harry Kane at Spurs, well, there have been rumours the likes of Andre Silva could come in from Frankfurt, but a little more on them later. And also, some of the money could go towards bringing in Jack Grealish. Not a light for light replacement for Harry Kane, but certainly a good use of any money they do get from the transfer. Okay, moving on then, and to Raul at Real Madrid, the former legend. Legend, the goal scoring great is apparently in talks with the club about replacing Zinedine Zidane. Now, nothing has been confirmed just yet. We spoke yesterday that Zidane, contrary to reports, over the weekend mentioned that he has not told his team that he is leaving because that would be a really bizarre thing to do when you're in the thick of a title race against your greatest rivals. 
Talking of Frankfurt, yet again, and they seem to be popping up quite a lot in today's daily news. They were the ones whose manager announced that he would be leaving for a league rival in Gladbach at the end of the season. And since then, they've managed to miss out on the Champions League places. We'll get to them in a minute. As for Raul, he actually has been linked with the Frankfurt job, but is waiting to see on the outcome of Zindi Zidane's future. It's likely that I mentioned once we know what happens in La Liga and who wins the title and who finishes second, Zidane will be able to make a clearer picture of his future and decide what he wants to do. Going with another player who's been a legend at the club, hasn't got much coaching experience in Raul, seems like a bit of a risk to me. Like, I know you can obviously point to Zidane and say, well, Zidane was brilliant, worked out very well for him. I just think that Zidane... Being a player who hasn't got much experience of going straight into the first team, being successful, much like Guardiola, is a bit of an anomaly. And we've seen it elsewhere lots of times where it just doesn't work out. Certainly doesn't work out to the level of success that Real Madrid are hoping for. If they don't go for him, there is the name Max Allegri. Of course, I cannot, rem I cannot remember a video that I haven't done in the past probably two years since, uh, since Allegri left Juventus where whenever there's a managerial opening, Allegri hasn't been mentioned. And the, surely he's looking for a job now. It's been so long and I really think that Real Madrid does fit the bill. Moving on though, and to a bit of transfer news coming out of Anfield. And apparently the club aren't prepared to pay the 18 million pounds which it'll take to bring Ozan Kabak to the club on a permanent basis. This is because they had another Bundesliga defender in mind. The Turkish centre-half had joined in January on loan from Schalke, and since then Schalke's uh, relegation has been confirmed from the Bundesliga after a shocking season, and it's clear that he doesn't want to return to the club and play in the second division. So, where is he going to go next? Well, rumour has it he's going to be moving to Leipzig, and the reason being because Leipzig are losing a defender to, guess who, Liverpool. These transfer circles just go round and round and round. So yes, there's been so many rumours that Ibrahim Okonate has agreed to deal with Liverpool for around 40 million euros. If they bring him in, it leaves a hole in the Leipzig defence. It means that Kabak's pushed further down the pecking order at Liverpool. So it makes sense for him to go back to Schalke and then agree his own deal with Leipzig. Everyone's a winner. Except for Schalke, maybe. Ah, having said that, they get around 18 million euros or potentially more after just being relegated, so that helps the club's coffers. Anyway, with Liverpool, they are set to welcome Virgil van Dijk back to pre-season training after he has said he will not be joining the Netherlands for the Euro 2020 campaign and he will instead be focusing on pre-season and the same thing goes for Joe Gomez as well. Moving on then, and we finally do come to Frankfurt for you Frankfurt fans that are waiting for this piece of news. And yes, I have spoken with Nico on our OneFootball German channel as well. He doesn't appear too happy because apparently they're going to be losing quite a few players this summer. Like I mentioned before, they missed out on the Champions League in the Bundesliga with just a few games to go, but it does mean they are in the Europa League. Having said that, quite a few of them could be on their way out. The first one is Evan Ndika, the left-sided centre-half, who's apparently in talks with the likes of Tottenham and Arsenal. There's Daichi Kamada, who's interesting the likes of Watford and Sevilla. And on top of this, there's still a few other players who could leave. The first one is Jetro Williams, who's eager to return to Newcastle after the expiry of his contract. And the two big deals, the two big money-spinning transfers, could first off be Philip Kostic. He is apparently very keen on moving to Inter Milan, and Inter Milan are keen on taking him in. In. He's had a brilliant few seasons with Frankfurt, providing a ridiculous amount of assists. And there's a wing back slash winger who can assist, who can score, who's insanely quick, boundless energy, brilliant at link up play, and fast counter attacking. My God. He suits Inter Milan down to a T. And the last one, I mentioned him earlier, with Spurs being interested if they do lose Harry Kane, and that is Andre Silva. With a ridiculous amount of score points this season in the Bundesliga, he has done so, so well and is on the radar of many top clubs. Of course, this really is his first good season in quite a few years, but having said that, that's never stopped someone earning a big transfer before. I mean, look at Luka Jovic from Frankfurt. He had that one good season and got a 60 million deal to Real Madrid. Anyway, Andre Silva could be the big money spinner leaving the club. And although, like I mentioned before, it is really disappointing to lose five potential players and out on Champions League football, Bring in, when you consider all those five, around 100 million euros could definitely help them build for the future. Finally then, we come to a roundup of the rest of the day's news and transfer news that you might have missed. And Manchester United and Manchester City are going to do battle for Sporting Club de Portugal's Nuno Mendes, the left-back who's had a stellar campaign in their title-winning season. Elsewhere, Matteo Guendouzi, the Arsenal midfielder who's been alone at Hertha Berlin this season, is apparently close to a permanent deal back to his native France, this time with Marseille. Both Barnsley and Brentford have it all to do in the second leg of the Championship playoffs after they lost 1-0 to both Swansea and Bournemouth respectively. And lastly but not least, 
A bit of good news coming out from Barcelona. I've seen they've ended Pedri's season early. Basically, they are very, very well aware that the 18-year-old has played in every single La Liga game this season. Of the 37 matches they've played so far, 27 starts, 10 sub-appearances, and that could lead to a bit of burnout. So with his likely introduction into the Spain squad for the Euro campaign this summer, they've given him holiday a little bit early. The game against Stybar at the weekend is a bit of a dead rubber because they haven't really got much to play for anymore. So they're giving him a bit of a rest in case of burnout at such a young age, which I can only really applaud the club for. So well done to them. That's all from me then today. Make sure you let me know your thoughts down below, especially on that Harry Kane transfer. Check out everything else we've got going on. And until next time, I will see you guys later.